uh, article here from Mixmag, which is um, stating that there's people are now using apps, illegal apps or no bespoke apps, I guess, to promote their own little illegal raves, which I pr- I spoke about the other day, didn't I? Um, or p- previous podcast about the uprising in these kind of uh, going back to the old school or throwing these raves and warehouses and stuff back to the days of you know acid house from especially in the UK, if you know most of your parents or people from the old generation were used to raving in the late mostly in the late 80s or middle of uh, mid 80s you know going to random farmlands anywhere or sheds and stuff and throwing these mad amazing legal raves and now it's kind of come back in verbally in the uk or in london specifically because most of our venues or most of the cooler venues that you'd actually want to go to are now closing down um, and it seems as if the local authorities, the local councils don't really have that much of a connection or relationship with the local clubs or the local dance community, dance community, dance or nightlife community for the most part. So there's this weird friction that happens, you know, new club opens, it gets a lot of people coming in, booming is business, uh, business is booming in the local council or in local community. And then for the most part, um, someone complains and then that turns into suddenly the license getting revoked, late license get taken away, which then impacts the club's ability to make money and cover their payroll. And then, you know, it kind of just goes on and on. And, you know, fast forward five years later, a big a property firm comes in, buys the land where the club's at anyway, and builds a big shiny new flat there and it's gone, right? So it's kind of gentrification is essentially ruining the light life that we have here in London. Of course, for the most part, nightlife in London is a bit shit anyway because bars don't open long enough, pubs don't open long enough. So essentially, we are really stretching the resources that we have available. Everyone gets kind of spat out of bars and pubs at the same time and they end up kind of looking for places to go and there's only a few to go to and then they end up kind of, you know, um, what's that word called? they end up uh, really pushing those places to their limits. So um, illegal raves were kind of, it makes sense. But again, they're not the safest place to go to for everyone. They're not the most um, uh, easy to find places for most people. And they're just not for everyone, just in general. So it's not the best place to kind of promote alternative nightlife activities because it's only really res- um, reserved for a certain segment of the population now, again if you go to them you'll be like yeah i don't care i don't want random people there anyway but really what we should be having are safe spaces where we can go and rave we shouldn't be throwing illegal raves in the middle of some power plant somewhere where we don't know the date there's no health and safety regulations there we don't know what's happened. We don't know if we're standing on something that might kind of cave in on itself. Like honestly, it's just it's just a really uh, treacherous situation. Considering the amount of money uh, London generates through its nightlife economy, we should be able. They should be able to set up a fund or set up some places that we can go to just have you know get weird. But we don't. So essentially, this makes my cover kind of t- t- covers it. So let's talk about it now. Blah, blah, blah. The title is how illegal rave crews are using. Uh, custom apps to avoid the police from the mix mic um, says the following um, on november 22nd last year more than a thousand ravers flooded into a squat in a 10 for 10 story office block in shoreditch wow for legal rave headlined by a jump up and drum bay specialist jay lynn with a bone crunching sound system and no defined clothes and the event echoed thousands of similar raves that have spanned the 30 year history of the uk party scene apart from one key element it was organized via a special design smartphone app wow okay awesome um, the app was created by London-based party crew uh, formed in November last year who asked to be named as SGL. One of its key functions is to transmit the party location to ravers in a way that can't be monitored by police. Replacing the info line system where the ravers call a burner phone number after a certain time to get the postcode via a recorded message. First, we release the location via the app, says the 21-year-old founder of SGL, who has asked to be called Mark, not his real name. <laughs> Once there are 20, 200 people in the building, then it's much harder for the police to shut the party down and we can release locations over social media without worrying too much. A raver can only use the app once they have verified their identity by sending a screenshot of the Pacific social media chat and a photo of their own face of the crew's Instagram account. The app also has security levels, and a lot of people think that it's just a way of stopping the police from raiding their parties, but that wasn't the only reason we developed it. Mark says his crew wanted to break down the barrier between organizers and ravers. If identities have been verified to some extent via the app, there can be more dialogue between the people attending the parties and the party organizers. It's not just a recorded message. We're asking ravers what they want and what we can do better. Amazing. So this is a quite a cool way, isn't it? It does remind me of the old school raver things. I think they'd put posters up with these numbers of burner phones that you'd call. You'd ring up and it'd be a voicemail. Because that was during, that was obviously presiding the era 
when we used to leave voicemails for each other on our T-Mobile lines and stuff because it was free. You could call up your voice. So you could leave a voicemail for your friend. That's how you would basically speak to each other if you had no credit. You'd call directly to their voicemail number because you had a, a separate voicemail number. I forgot if it was like a code or a different number. You call that, you leave a message, they'd call their voicemail to hear their message and then call you back. It'd be like a back and forth thing. It's pretty cool. Um, so they've taken that and kind of ex- ex- extrapolated. So it's a pretty analog method. It's a pretty old school method that's been kind of updated into the kind of digital age, right? With the addition of the app, which is amazing to see. Um, and then obviously, and I, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm a bit puzzled about the 200 people, they can't stop the raving. What does that mean? Does that mean if you have 200 people, they can't get you out? Or is it because they can't be bothered to deal with the paperwork in the morning? Because legitimately, police can shut down anything, right? They can shut down and fold if they wanted to tomorrow, right? Just walk, walk up and say, the party's locked off. They don't need to. It doesn't need to be a certain number of people, I don't think. But anyway, it continues here. Some cool pictures of the rave itself. Again, I've had many a good times in Warehouse Park, especially in Hackney Wick. There was a real good um, purple patch era that happened maybe a few years ago that, you know, every other week, you just basically head out walk around, you know, um, the studios and stuff, hear some noise and walk up to the gate, see if it's paid or not and do your thing in it. Um, now it's kind of stopped. There's not so much of that happening now. I think a lot of the old crew have kind of, you know, leveled up and moved to different places or some of the people have grown out of it and just not interested in, you know, turning their place into like a squat party. But regardless, it was a good, good time and I really enjoyed myself then. Anyway, it continues. SGL has made its app downloadable via the Apple App Store and through Google Play. It's now have more than 500 verified users. The crew says it also has a backlog of more than 900 request requests that will still need to process. It's going insane. We've only done three raves using the app so far, but the systems work really well and we're updating it all the time. The risk party organizers run was highlighted November 16th when Kent police stormed the rave in the disused carpet right warehouse in Strud in Strud where there were more than one thousand ravers. The police could don't like us because we're hooded teens listening to drum and bass and going mad says Mark. Punters get a hard time and we've had quite a bit of equipment uh seized bloody oh, imagine how much equipment getting equipment seized if you're running a warehouse party it must be brutal man i mean you're already running you're already running it on the edge anyway right and then having your equipment seized is just nutty man that's a that's a huge chunk of your of your initial outlay cost i'd imagine bloody yo um sgl believes modern technology can help squat party crews put on bigger parties with less police interference and the strength in the UK's underground rave community. But some established crews and ravers remain unconvinced. Some tells us they're worried that too much personal information will be collected by rave organizers through the app and it's information oh come on, who gives a shit about that? Um, come, like if you're between the ages of like 17 and like 22 and you haven't had the opportunity and you've only the only times that you've gone out is that to a school disco or your end of year six one party thing and then you go to that to weatherspoons and you go from weatherspoons to going to like a cool bar somewhere in a really trendy place in maybe south north east or west london and then suddenly you go to like a really established night out where you gotta buy tickets on resident advisor and then somebody invites you to a warehouse party right for the first time and you you know you queue up outside some mad location a primary school a funeral home you know a former police station whatever a former um old people's home right you get ushered into the to a secret door through a little alleyway cool under a gate cool over a gate and then you meet people that look like you same age as you who are from different walks of life all booming and dancing and shaking to this crazy music being played by mad djs crazy lights um you know, balloons going off all over the place. Right, people just start raving, having a good time. You really gonna be bothered about people maybe potentially taking your data and sending you uh, marketing material? Do you really care about that after that experience? Come on, Jesus Christ! But the um, so it continues here. But other free party veterans believe a new tender would be embraced. Uh, should be embraced. Sorry, they said squad parties have always been good for music, a DIY mentality, and they're staying one step ahead of the police, says DJ Monarchy, a former member of the UK Free Party crew, uh, Brain Brainscan. Though 
there are potential pitfalls with social media it's a very easy way to reach a huge audience he says and if crews make apps it's better than relying on things like snapchat which have been developed by big corporations 100 percent agree if you're going to choose you got you have to choose one of the lesser evils in it sgl has already been approached by other legal rave organizers that want advice about how to create the bespoke app some crews are considering including tracking function that will allow them to see the users locations that will allow them to revoke access to users doing something suspicious like accessing the app in the police station hmm. But that's a bit dumb, really, isn't it? Because you know, you could, you if you're a snitch, you're gonna be, you're gonna, you're not gonna meet the guy at fucking Liverpool Street Police Station, isn't it? You're gonna just gonna go and meet them in the press somewhere. It could also allow event organizers to send out warnings if users are heading towards a location with a heavy police presence. Okay, awesome. Raving has always been a um about innovation, says Mark. When we started, we had one no reputation, and we had no use, no new ideas, and we had to use new ideas, sorry, to be able to compete. Parties like our rave in Shoreditch proved that modern technology can be used to put on a big unlicensed party. Uh, Will Chris, the freelance journalist, following him now on Twitter. So yeah, really cool to see, man. Again, I think for the kids coming up now, you need to experience a warehouse rave because I think in general, it does really make you appreciate or maybe identify what area of dance music you are more interested in. I think sometimes clubs can maybe give you a bit of a warped idea of what dance music is about, what clubbing culture is about, what nightlife culture is about for the most part. And raves for the most part are real good, um, I would say, fast track to figure out what you like and what you don't like. Whether it is, oh, I want to be a promoter. I want to be a DJ. I want to be a club kid. I just want to be around. Um, I like Gabba. I like hardcore. I like um, drum and bass. I like jungle, house, whatever. Like, it really gives you a quick learning. It really gives you a really good um platform to kind of understand what works best for you going forward. Um, So, yeah, good to see these kids doing some crazy cool stuff. And, again, I like that whenever you think things are getting bleak, whenever you think there's, like, noth- nothing going on, there's stuff like this bubbling on the underground that you haven't even heard about. Like, I've never heard of this app, you know. I still get most of my underground kind of free warehouse party things from Facebook or various groups i'm part of right I, I didn't even know this was happening so it's cool to see that this thing's happening outside of my remit because i'm an old fuck in it so that's good to see man so yeah check it out it's an article from the mix mag so custom it's called um how illegal rave crews are using custom apps to avoid the police